My name is Jan Kleisel. I'm a professor in mechanical and environmental engineering at UC San Diego. I started here three years ago to make a better place for uh, solar power in California. Right here we're seeing our largest uh, photovoltaic installation on the campus. It's a 350 kilowatt system, part of a 1.2 megawatt total. And also the future side of uh, 10 electric charging stations that we will install here later this year. Uh, these panels are polycrystalline uh, photovoltaic panels and they uh, were installed uh, two years ago and they are on solar trees which is a unique part here so individual uh, structures that hold up to 20 panels um, and uh, shade the cars that are parked underneath them also reducing air conditioning use in cars as a secondary advantage. Another reason why this site is, is very important to us is that our sky imager system is on a nearby building. So we can do forecasting of uh, cloud shading at a site that's very close to the sky imager and test how accurate are these forecasts. So the sky imager will take an image of the sky every 30 seconds. And we can see the full 360 degrees of um, angles in the sky imager. And then we take these images and we process them on a computer. The first step is to detect where are the clouds in the image. Our eye can do this very well, but the computer has to be trained to do it. And the second step is to take uh, two images taken 30 seconds apart and then figure out where have the clouds gone in that time period. Again, our eyes can do it easily, but the computer has to need some help to do it. And once we have done these two steps, then we can advect the cloud field in time and predict uh, in 30 seconds or two minutes or 10 minutes where will the clouds have traveled to. They may have been over this array or other arrays on the campus, so we can confirm the forecast with the actual generation data from these solar arrays. So here's a weather station which measures all the main parameters that we use, which is uh, air temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction. But most importantly for our project, it's uh, solar radiation through this pyranometer. We also have a GPS here, so we can exactly time synchronize our measurements to the other stations that we have around the campus. Well, the sensors are actually interesting because um, they uh, work completely without power. They are little solar panels that uh, convert the sunlight to electricity, just like the solar panel. The difference is with the sensor you get uh, microwatts of, of power, which you cannot use for anything but a measurement whereas a solar panel may generate kilowatts or megawatts of, of power and you, you can use that to, to feed uh, power into the grid. So these sensors, uh, they're tiny sensors mounted on, on tripods. We can cover an area like a campus or a city and we can then um, detect very accurately how much radiation is coming to the ground in these different areas. Then we want to link that together. The sensors are somewhat blind. They can only see the very one spot that is in the sky above them. You want to link them together with uh, cameras and uh, visual imagery that uh, can show us the cloud patterns move through either from a satellite or from a, a fisheye camera on the ground. So here is our total sky imager. It has a camera up at the top looking down onto this mirror. The mirror reflects all of the surrounding sky into the camera, which means we can see as far down as the ocean and as far east as uh, the mountain areas of San Diego and we can map out all the clouds in this area with this one camera. On the mirror, you have a shadow band that's uh, rotating, so it'll block out the sun, which, as you all know, is very important for getting high-quality imagery. And lastly, we have our cleaning supply to make sure the mirror stays clean and we get good quality images. For our solar radiation work, uh, we are interested in two things. Uh, one is we want to create better maps of uh, both solar radiation and um, how you should install solar power systems. We're also interested in more of a real-time operational environment where you try to forecast solar radiation so that operators of power plants, operators of the utility grid can better plan ahead as to the scheduling and running of other power plants. On this map, we, we can see that uh, we have areas where it's better to uh, turn your solar panel more towards the west, and other areas where it's better to turn more towards the east, and the most areas where it's better to just turn it south because that's, on average, the position of the sun. 
And so it turns out, if you look at uh, the coast of the entire West Coast, actually from um, Bellingham down to San Diego, we see a lot of uh, red color, which means that we should point a panel about 10 degrees west. And that's because in these areas, we have uh, very persistent morning fogs, uh, especially in the summertime in California. And this means that little radiation in the morning, a lot of radiation in the afternoon, so pointed to where the radiation is, which means pointed towards the west. If you look at other areas, uh, so for example, Arizona, New Mexico, parts of Texas, uh, Florida, you see the blue colors, and that means you should put your panel towards the east. And that's because the opposite effect happens there. These are all thunderstorm areas, and thunderstorms usually uh, start in around midday and last through the afternoon. That means it becomes more cloudy now in the afternoon, and the morning is sunny, so you would put your panel towards the opposite side, towards the east side, uh, which uh, is the, the uh, non-cloudy period of the day. Our campus is a test bed. We have um, a lot of solar power here, and we have dense measurements, and we have the sky camera, so we already can put everything together and figure out how important is it to have these cameras, more and what is the benefit, and from based on our findings, we can then judge uh, how many and if we, we should install these sky measures on the ground. We have seen in, in Europe, in, in Spain, uh, Germany, that um, solar forecasting is, is much more developed, uh, and, and they have installed um, many de much denser systems that monitor solar power. In the United States, right now, we don't have enough yet, um, but in the future, we hope that uh, the system operator, which already is using wind forecasts, for example, um, to inform how they schedule power plants, will also be interested in the solar forecasts uh, once solar has grown to the same level of, of wind power on the grid.